Yeah, I'm Colin Bull. I'm a um, elected board member of the LLS. Uh, just before I get too started uh, on today's event, I just thought what we run into quite a bit is, well, who in the hell is LLS? So I just thought I'd give you a brief outline. Um, LLS was started 10 years ago as a brainchild of the then uh, Minister of Agriculture, Katrina Hodgkinson, in the Liberal government. It was an amalgamation of rural land protection boards, uh, the CMAs and most of the DPI. And the staff were all amalgamated into various sections of uh, what is now LLS. Um, uh, the board consists of a, an appointed chair by the whoever's the Minister for Agriculture at the time, three elected members, or chosen ones as we call them, uh, by the Minister and three of us who have to pay, face the public. Uh, and we get elected every, or stand for election every three years. Um, the, kind of read my own writing. Uh, the Murray, New South Wales divided up into 11 LLS areas and the Murray LLS uh, goes from Mount Kosciuszko in the east right through to the other side of Bal Ranald in the west and follows the Murray River right along. So we have a very diverse area of, um, of country starting up in the mountains and finishing up in the west and the, or say about Bal Ranald out in the desert but they don't believe that. Um, so basically the, the role of LLS is uh, animal health, which we have vets in Deniloquin and uh, Albury. Uh, we have remnant, veg uh, sorry, remnant, I'll get it right in a minute, threatened species who we look after things like the Plains <coughs> Wanderers, uh, emergency services, which uh, our staff have been involved with the uh, environment in the bees, floods and fires all throughout New South Wales. So there's a crossover of staff. Um, we have 53,000 hectares of travelling stock reserves which we're expected to maintain for the greater good. We have the Ramsar wetlands down along uh, the Murray River uh, which in conjunction with the local Aboriginal people uh, we work on that. Uh, we have pest animals, which our staff work in conjunction with landholders for fox, rabbits, wild dog baiting, uh, pigs and deer and anything else that bobs its head up. And our ag department, they come up with days like today, organising very good speakers, and basically their role is informing ratepayers of emerging trends and in our area around here, as far as the water issue, doing more with less. So just a broad outline, um, as I said, I'm an elected uh, board member. Uh, it can be rewarding, it can be very frustrating, but we have an election coming up which I'm not allowed to stand for. So anyone who thinks they might like to get involved, uh, you're most welcome when the ads come out. So that's a little spiel about the LLS. So I'd like to congratulate the ag team for organising the speakers today. It's a very, very good lineup and very informative. ESG is an interesting one, environmental, social and governance. Now, if anyone's over that, they can come up to me later and explain it because I've got no idea. But what we're up against, and I think it fits into this bill, that a lot of poor policies coming out of Europe to the point of they had a policy that man-made fibres are far more envir environmentally friendly than cotton and wool. So I'm not too sure how you come up with that, but that's one of their little gems. And I think you can see the reaction of the Dutch and French farmers that they're not looking after their farmers very well. Anyway, look, welcome everyone here today. Uh, I'd like to welcome Dr Sarah Healy to the um, podium. She's going to be the MC for the day. She'll do a far better job than I would. And um, once again, con congratulations to the ag team for coming up with a very good plan today. And I hope you all get something out of it and all over ESG by the end of the day. So thank you for your attendance. <laughs> 